I've got some very trivial question. Uh, I mean, this is very naive, but uh, Pavel, do you think we can translate this in the language of acoustics, pressure waves? Uh, take a look. What I have seen previously with one dimensional wire medium, uh, it was immediately, yeah, analog is a little bit different. There's a holes in the medium and everything is fine, yeah? So in this sense, I believe that it can be transferred, but we need some uh, person from mechanics, from acoustics, who will properly do it. If equations are similar, then definitely you can observe this in acoustics as well. But uh, I personally haven't thought how it may look like. I will be happy to help colleagues if they know how to do it, whatever mechanically or, or acoustically, I can help in terms of what we got done in electromagnetics. It's really very interesting because symmetry of the system is extremely high, it's cubical uh, symmetry. But because of these connections, of crazy connections of wires, you have waves which may travel only along fixed free directions in terms of the wave vectors. And this is fun in a sense. I don't know analogous uh, metamaterials or natural materials uh, uh, which have similar properties. And uh, as far as I understand, this is for microwaves so far. Yeah, so this is perfect conductor so far, I yeah. would say. So definitely can be done at microwaves. Yes. Um, terahertz. Uh, for visible domain, it's an issue of manufacturing of the samples and understanding how to deal with longitudinal waves. Because right now, the problem which I do have is uh, free space. Free space do not support longitudinal waves. So as soon as you're trying to excite longitudinal waves from free space, they do not want to be excited. And this is what we are trying to do, yeah? And any optical experiments, if needed, have, uh, they have to be done only after understanding how the modes can be excited. Because if you just properly kind of you have a, a, a cylindrical uh, symmetry of the mode, like for a uh, coaxial waveguide, and if you launch a plane wave, it's just orthogonal to the plane wave, and you will never excite it. You need some kind of whatever antenna or matching layer or transformer from uh, transverse waves into longitudinal in order to excite. And this is an issue. If it will be done, there are some already proposals in one of the papers of Shanghui uh, Fan about antennas. Then it, uh, it, it can be done. Luckily, in our case, uh, there are also TM waves, which are evanescent, but they form a kind of this transformer. They're a little bit excited in this lattice, and these TM waves uh, in the stop band of material excite longitudinal waves. That's why, which I was showing, we have found some peaks in uh, propagation over here. And we were able to excite them at least numerically right now. Experimentally, we still suffer from the problems because resonances are very narrow and uh, not easy really to demonstrate and detect this. Experiment with a field distribution like this is nearly ready, but experiments with propagation is quite, quite complicated one. Uh, Pavel, I have a question regarding this uh, pr uh, this mismatch problem when you come from air with the transverse wave and you want to excite this purely, uh, like, uh, let's say, pu purely longitudinal one. Can you do it with adiabatic wave? Can you design something in the middle to uh, basically that would uh, that would have the, let's say, the field uh, getting more and more of uh, longitudinal? Yeah, take a look. Yeah, so still, uh, I have to refer to the property at microwaves. I have to refer to, to the property of air, and air supports only transverse waves. This is the problem. Yeah, of course, yeah. you may have create a longitudinal component of electrical fields. For this purpose, you may take a small dipole, place it in the, in the interface. It will slightly excite uh, everything what is needed, but still, because there is no energy transfer in the free space for longitudinal waves. It's pretty hard, yeah? So you really have to modify interface. You have to really make some uh, transformer from one polarization to another. So, um, so, uh, sorry, yeah, Sebastian, can, can I ask? 
Yes, please. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Very interesting talk. So my question was actually uh, maybe more related to the asymmetric structure because um, um, all this of having um, a reduced unit cell and band gaps opening when you have the asymmetric structure with the larger unit cell is very reminiscent of, uh, of some topological models like this in one dimension. So I was wondering if, if you have looked at edge modes, topological edge modes, if you expect they may appear, if somebody has looked at them. I think you have looked mostly at the symmetric structure. But perhaps in, in the asymmetric one, you, you can have uh, topological edge modes. Uh, take a look. Uh, what actually happening uh, over here? If you use asymmetrical structure, then uh, formally, mathematically, you indeed have uh, 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 dispersion coming from the gamma point because uh, as it should be. But the problem is that actually, if you take a look at this spectrum, which I was showing you, give me a moment, uh, like this, for example, uh, over here. Uh, if you do the same analysis, uh, which I'm showing over here, when you expand into the plane waves for asymmetric case, you will get a very weak intensity in the gamma point and still very large intensity near H points. This property, which I show you here, remains for asymmetrical case. It means that this mode, uh, which is supported by asymmetrical case, is longitudinal and still predominantly store or keep energy, not in the brilliant zone corresponding to the gamma point, but uh, the most of the energy and the field is in these H points and so on. This is really strange because in normal materials like an uh, array of spheres, it never happens. If you have PCC lattice or spheres, then uh, predominantly you have modes near the gamma point and the density is there. But over this here, is, for <clears throat> this is sorry, this is also very reminiscent of the polarization concentration at different points in the Brillouin zone in models like the SSH model. And presumably you may have two phases uh, where you break the symmetry along one direction or the other, uh, where this, uh, where the polarization concentrates more in, in one area of the plural zone of the reciprocal space or another. No, no, no. This it's is what not, I'm wondering. It's related yeah, to this, maybe. Yeah, basically, yeah. Basically, you have very complicated mode this very complicated mm -hmm. distribution of electric and magnetic field in, in, inside of unit cell, uh, like a hedgehog in a sense. And then you would like to expand it into the plane waves. Then you just simply multiply by corresponding uh, wave number from a particular brilliant zone and take the integral. And over here, you will see that uh, for first brilliant zone, you will get some very, very small number. But for other zones, you will have very large numbers. This is what I also do not understand kind of until the end how it can be, because there is no analogous systems. But looks like but this is really, in a sense, different channel. We usually assume when the wave is propagating through periodic material, then it's transferred by predominantly uh, one wave, and usually it's kind of near the gamma point. Uh, in photonic crystals, it's known that it may happen differently. But over here, very low frequencies, different special harmonics actually carry energy without dominant one in, in near the gamma point. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I, I see some reminiscence to some topological models. Maybe it's worth something to think about. Thank you. And sorry if I, I will uh, turn off. Bye. Thank you so much. Do we have more questions? Adel, may I ask you a very, a very naive question? And now it's a long time that I have not been studying uh, electromagnetism. But if I take the structure that you have down in the blue, and I say I want an electromagnetic wave with the E field, uh, which is vertical, that would come uh, like along the one zero zero axis. 
if I just consider the blue, uh, the blue part and perfect metals, I would not transmit through the structure. And same, same will apply for the, let's say the one, the zero one direction. So now, exactly, so, yeah. So now you are telling me that uh, now if I look inside of the structure, an electromagnetic field with the field with the k vector uh, being horizontal, but the e field, for example, being also horizontal, could propagate. Yeah, exactly. And and then I'm just just wanting to understand the physical principle. So along the wire, the uh, horizontal wire that is perfect in metal. So there I can have uh, like first of all an electric field which could be uh, interpreted as equivalently. Uh, a periodic potential in the in the electric field. Is that correct? Uh, take a look. I, I'm not sure about periodic potential. In electromagnetic sense, you can say that actually your materials became a transmission line. And we have transmission line, like for example, a twisted pair, where you have two metal wires parallel to each other, and this uh, one supports transverse waves. But we have also coaxial cable. And coaxial cable supports, uh, in a sense, longitudinal waves. So, with a uh, total integral of electric field across equal to zero. Over here, we've got a coaxial cable in 3D. So, one piece of metal do not allow field to pass. Another piece of metal uh, do not allow field to pass. But the combination altogether allows. I have to digest that, but in the, in the overall picture, you don't get any cutoff frequency. Yeah. For this for longitudinal waves. Yeah, yeah, there is no cutoff. Okay. And for trans for for coaxial cable, it's extremely wide band, and it indeed exists uh, at very low frequencies. Yeah. So there is no cutoff at all, from zero frequencies up to very. It's very wide band. Yeah. I would say it's kind of uh, how to say it. This is a perfectly isotropic material for both longitudinal waves in a sense. Yeah. So the spheres, are, isofrequencies are, are, are spherical, very nice, but the waves are longitudinal. And uh, because of, I mean, kind of, it's like a vacuum, but for longitudinal waves, vacuum is also very wide back, but for transverse waves. Thank you. Do we have some more questions? Looks like that we don't have any any more questions. So I would like to thank you again for this uh, very nice talk. It has been uh, recorded and uh, it will be made available by our, our platform. So if anyone wants to watch it again, you. You are free. They are all updated. So thanks, Pavel, for the talk, and uh, and uh, talk to you all uh, next week for the next seminar. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If somebody has any questions, please ask uh, later on. Yeah, via email. Contact me. Thank you so much, Pavel. Fantastic talk. Thank Great. you. Really new to me. Thank okay, you guys. Thank you. You're doing a very good job. Very, very interesting seminar. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Very nice. Yeah. See you. See you. Bye. Bye bye.